All right, so what is up guys? Welcome to the third part of the chatbot app in Android Studio series. And in the last video, we worked on the UI and set up the app so we could actually display everything we need to. So now it's finally time to actually work on the logic. So the first thing we're going to do is go to our Java folder and open our main folder where the main activity is located. And we are going to right click on it because we want to create a new package. So we're gonna click on package and the first one we want to create is a package that will handle all of the UI. And the first thing we can do is drag the main activity into that package and click on Refractor. And also in case you don't see any packages, you can go to this settings cog wheel up here and you want to click on compact middle packages. So it gets rid of that. Then it will take you back to the normal layout where you can see all of your packages and the package hierarchy. So right now we only have a UI inside our chatbot2 folder and we want to right click on it again so we can create a few more packages. And the second package we're gonna create is called utils. And finally, one more package, which is going to be called data. And we're gonna create a new class immediately inside the data package. And it's going to be a data class, which will be a data class of message. Then the next thing to do is to turn this into a data class just by adding the word data in front of the class. And that means we have to add some parameters. So the first one we want to add is the value of message, which is just going to be a, which is just going to be a string and it's going to be the message that the user sends. Then we're gonna add a value called ID, which is gonna be of type string as well. And this is just going to be who sent the message and who's receiving the message. And then finally, we're going to add a value called time and that's going to be of type string. And that's just going to take a timestamp in case you want to display when the message was sent. And of course, it would be a lot nicer to store this as a long value because those are easier to sort out. But for this example, having it as a string is perfectly acceptable. And as soon as we're done with that, we're gonna to go to our utils file and create a new object. And this is going to be for all of our constants. So we're just gonna name it constants. And the first thing we want to type in here is constant value send ID. So the send ID is gonna be for the sender. Whoever sends the message will have this send ID. And for now, we're just gonna call it send underscore ID. And then we're going to do the same thing for the receive ID. So it's just gonna be called receive underscore ID. And it's going to have a string value of receive underscore ID. And right below, we will add two more constants. The first one's going to be constant value open Google. And this is just to tell the program to open Google. So we're just gonna call it opening Google. And we're gonna do the same thing for the search. So we're gonna just copy and paste that right below. And then we can just say open search. And inside here, we're just gonna change that to searching. And you'll see how we use these later, but for now, all you need to know is that we will use it to open Google and also to open the search bar. And then the next thing we're gonna do in this video is go to our UI folder and we're gonna create an adapter for our recycle view so we can display the messages as soon as we start sending the information. So we're just gonna type in Kotlin file class and we are going to call this messaging adapter and click on class. And the first thing we have to do in here is extend the recycle view adapter. So we're gonna type in recycler view and call dot adapter, which is going to take a view holder as an argument. And then don't forget to add this pair of parentheses at the end. And the first thing we're gonna do before we implement all the features of the recycler view is create an inner class, which is going to be called message view holder. And that will take care of the error up here as soon as we finish creating this class. So it's going to take an item view of type view as a parameter and we need to import view and it's going to return the recycler view dot view holder with the item view as an argument. And the reason we turned this into an inner class is because we wanted to execute some further logic such as removing items from the recycler view once we click on them. And I'm gonna be placing the delete queries inside here. So inside here, we're gonna create an init block and inside this init block, we're gonna get the item view and we're gonna set an on click listener for that. On click listener. And then we'll go ahead and add some code to this just in a moment. So right above, we want to create a variable and this variable is gonna be called messages list. And that's going to be 
a mutable list of type message, this one right here. And right after we've added this variable to the adapter, we can go and hover over our messaging adapter class and click on implement members. And we want to implement these three members. So we'll just click on OK. And it will give us all of this boilerplate code that is required to make the recycle view work. And just so we don't have to deal with the inner class later, we will return to it immediately and we will insert some code which will remove items from the list. So we're just going to call messages list and type remove at and we want to remove it at the position it was clicked on. So we'll just type in adapter position, which gets the most recent position of the item you're clicking on. And then to give it a nice animation, we have to notify that it has been removed. So we'll type in notify item removed at the position of adapter position. And it is as simple as that to remove an item from the message list. Then we can go to our onCreate view holder and return a view holder. So the first thing we want to do is type in return and we want to return a message view holder. And inside here, we need to call our layout inflator and we want to inflate it from our parent dot context. And then we have to call dot inflate, which is going to take our r dot layout dot message underscore item. And it wants us to import R before we continue. Otherwise, it will not find the message item that we've created. And just in case you're confused, if you go to your res file and click on layout, you'll see that we have the message item down here. And that's the one that contains the two views for the messages. So anyway, add that to your inflated layout. And then we need to also add that it is the parent and that we do not want to attach it to the root. Then just so we can get this out of the way, we're going to return a get item count size of messages list dot size. Then let's create some space down here, as Philip would always say, and we can add some code to our on bind view holder. So the logic that we have to add in here is the logic that will decide which side to display a message on. And if it comes from the bot, it will be displayed to the left in red. Otherwise, if it comes from us, it will be displayed on the right in green. So we need to find out how to differentiate who's sending what, and then we need to display it accordingly in the recycler view. And to do this, I actually created some very basic logic that will tell the program which one to put in the recycler view, and it goes as follows. So the first thing you want to do is get the current message, and we can just call it current message, and that's going to equal the messages list at the position of the position. Then we need to call when the current message dot ID is equal to the sender ID. And we can just import that from our constants. Then we can go ahead and create a small arrow and create a block immediately after. And inside this block, you want to call holder dot item view dot TV underscore message, which is going to be our message. And as you can see, there's also one that says bot message, and that's reserved for the bot. So make sure you click on TV underscore message, and we're going to call dot apply. And the first thing we want to write in here is the text, and we're going to set that text to the current message dot message that we've added. And then we want to make sure that this view is visible. So we can just type in visibility equals view dot visible. And right below our TV underscore message, we want to call holder dot item view dot TV underscore bot message, and we want to change this visibility to gone. So we're going to type in view dot gone. And that will just make sure that our message box will be the only one visible if we send a message for that current line. So the logic is not really that complicated. And we're going to do the same exact thing for the receive ID. So all we have to do is type in receive and add the nice arrow and finally create a block. So inside here, we're just going to type in holder dot item view dot TV underscore bot message. And we have to call the same apply block that we've created for our send ID. And inside here, we can just copy and paste these two lines of code and put them inside there. And then finally, we need to do the same thing that we did for the bot message and make our message disappear if the bot decides to send a message. So we only get one message at a time. So holder dot item view dot TV underscore message dot visibility. And we're going to set that to view dot gone. And that will take care of all the logic that we need to make the messages appear correctly in the recycler view. And finally, there's only one function that we have to create inside here. And that is the function that will insert the message into the adapter. And it's going to be a very simple function. It's going to be called function insert message. And that's going to take a message 
of type message as a parameter. And finally, inside here, all we have to do is refer to our message list, which is the one at the top. And we're going to type in this dot message list dot add, and we are going to say add our message. Then we also want to notify that an item was inserted. And this will give us a very beautiful animation as well. So make sure to call notify item inserted at messages list dot size. And as soon as you call this, you will notice at the bottom that there will be an animation each time you add a new message. And that's why it is super important that you call these pre-made functions in the recycle view, as opposed to calling notify data set changed, because this works, but it checks all the items in the recycle view to check if anything's been changed. And if something's been changed, it updates the entire recycle view. And on top of that, it doesn't really provide any nice animation for that. So it's kind of a lose-lose situation. Unless you're in a hurry, do not use this one. But with that being said, we've done everything we need for this video. We've set up an adapter and we've created our utils folder. In the next video, we'll actually be going over how to create the responses for the chatbots. And then after that, we will have one more video, which is gluing everything together in our main activity. So as always, thanks for watching and I'll see you guys in the next video.